Today we're going to be going through how to create this Minecraft style mob, but we're also going to be breaking down how to texture and UV unwrap for pixel art. So let's dive in. Great, so when you start in your scene here, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to snap to front view. And then we're going to change some settings to make this overall process a bit easier. First of all, what I want you to do is whatever render engine you are in, I want you to come over here to film. And down here under pixel filter, I want you just to drop this as low as possible. And this is just gonna kind of help by reducing anti-aliasing and giving you more of that kind of pixelated look. Next, what I want you to do is come up here to the snapping. We're going to snap to increment. We're going to do absolute grid snap, and then we're going to set it to affect the move and the scale. Now, when you switch to front view, we're going to be utilizing this grid. And what I want you to do is just kind of pretend each one of these grid pieces is a pixel. Visual effects play a large role in creative products, but they're time consuming, render intensive, and difficult to control. Dynamic Visual Effects Pack aims to solve all that. With over 25 visual effects assets, you can drag and drop into your scene with easy to use exposed controls. Annotated graphs to help you learn and customize further. And the best part is nearly everything renders super fast in either Eevee or Cycles. Let's dive in and take a look at how some of these can help save you time. And you'll notice here that when we tab into edit mode and move around, we will snap to those. Now, depending how far you're zoomed in, it may change exactly what increments it are snapping to. So the other thing you can do is that when you're moving this object around, you can hold shift and that will do kind of micro snaps. So you just wanna get it closely aligned because at the end, I'm gonna show you to check to automatically snap everything to the pixel. So now that we have our project set up, let's go ahead and dive in here and start creating this little Minecraft mob. Now, as is customary in Blender, you need to go ahead, delete the default cube and add a new cube. And then we're going to tab into edit view here. And I'm going to be switching to wireframe mode so that I can kind of see what I'm doing here a bit better. And I wanna go ahead and kind of squish this down. So let's squish this down to maybe be about eight pixels tall. So four pixels there above and four pixels there on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and shrink this in a bit so it's not quite as wide. I'm gonna do about maybe 14 pixels wide. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And just go ahead, snap it over to there. Perfect, and let's do that on the opposing side as well. Great, so now we're kind of getting a little crab body and we'll go ahead and we'll shrink this Y in a bit later. So let's go ahead here and start adding some features to our crab. So we're gonna hold Control R here. We're going to click in the middle there. And what that's going to do is go ahead and give us a uh, line right down the middle. And then we can go ahead and grab these verts right here with the box select. We're gonna hit I, and we're going to hold Control, and then we're going to bring this out. And as you see here, it's not snapping when we're using this inset feature, and that's okay. We're just gonna match it as close as we can. As I said, later we have a fix to kind of go about that. Perfect, great. Now let's go ahead and add some little shapes for the eye. So we'll go ahead here and we're going to add a cube. And you'll see that's very large. Let's go ahead, shrink this down to something like two pixels. And we're gonna go ahead and move that over here about two pixels away from the center. I'm gonna go ahead, plug that on top of our character and just make that one bit higher just for a little bit of character appeal. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and work on the arms. So again, we will go ahead, add another cube with Shift A there, scale that down to about two pixels. And you'll notice that when they do these types of pixelated characters and mobs, a lot of times they try and use the same sickness for various features just to kind of create some uniformity. So let's go ahead here, let's make this about five pixels long. So one, two, three, four, five, perfect. Now we're gonna go ahead, grab this, we're gonna hit duplicate there, move that over. With that still selected, I'm gonna hit R and then 90. What that's gonna do is rotate that arm. And we're gonna do a little bit of overlap on this one. So about one pixel overlap. So we'll go ahead, bring that there and move that just, just right around there. Perfect. So now we kind of have a little arm. So let's go ahead and create those claws. We'll add another cube here. And you'll notice I'm using all cube shapes as that's kind of the uh, style when working on these types of mobs. I actually want this one to be three pixels wide, so let's go ahead here, and we'll go ahead, grab this side, bring that in, and let's maybe make this about five pixels tall. So let's bring that up one pixel on the Z-axis. 
Now I'm going to go ahead, grab this crab claw here. We're going to check it from this side. I'd like it to be about one pixel wider on each of the arms, so about four long. Great. Let's come back here into front view. Bring this down here and bring this over to the left so we're getting kind of that one pixel overlap. Now let's hit Shift D, duplicate that and move that over on the X and have this one be right on the outside of the arm, just like that. With that, you can kind of see we're starting to get a little shape of our crab. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is go ahead here and we're going to grab this right here and we're going to hit Shift D. Bring this down to the center of our body here. Let's go ahead and bring this up one pixel. And then bring these up so they're kind of dead center with the body there. And then we'll just bring that one pixel inside the body. Perfect. Now let's go ahead here and we'll grab this object here by holding L over the object. Then I'll select the object. We'll hit Shift D. And we're going to rotate this 90 degrees by hitting R and then 90. We'll go ahead here. We'll do a single pixel overlap right there. Now let's go ahead and make this just a tiny bit shorter. So just one pixel shorter. You can kind of see how we're starting to get a shape of our mob here. Let's go ahead, switch here into the side view. We're going to go ahead and duplicate this leg a few times. So let's grab these leg shapes here. And crabs have... Uh, a lot of legs. So let's add a few legs here. Let's go ahead, move this over on the Y axis, hit Shift D, maybe make that about three pixels apart. Perfect. Now let's hit Shift D again, and then do one behind here, about six pixels there as well. So crabs actually have about four legs here on the bottom, and then they had these two arms as well. So let's go ahead and maybe do one more set of legs. So we'll go ahead, grab that one and that one. And we'll hit Shift D there, move that forward. And let's kind of squish these legs together a bit closer. So I'm going to go ahead, grab these, move these one to two pixels apart. Of course, feel free to adjust this to kind of play with it and get it to a style that you like. Great. So now we kind of have a bunch of legs there. Let's go ahead here, grab the front of the body uh, in wireframe mode, with the box select. We'll grab all of those and move those in on the Y. Let's move those maybe about one pixel ahead of the body there. Perfect. Let's go ahead, grab these back ones. Do these about one pixel away from there. So you can kind of see we're starting to get a little body with all these legs. And then what we want to do is kind of center up the arm on this. So we can go ahead, grab everything down here. And since we have part of this body selected, if we hit Control Plus a bunch of times, it'll go ahead and grab the body. And what we can do is go ahead and center this body back here. So now you can see we kind of have uh, a body centered with the arm. And then Crab's eyes tend to kind of be on the front. So let's go ahead, grab those eyes right there. And we can move those moving forward just a bit. So let's go ahead, grab those and move those forward to the front of the crab right there. Now you can move those as far front as you want. I'm going to kind of leave mine set back. Now, what we want to do is kind of symmetrize some of this. And a lot of times people like to use them mirror modifier, but there's actually a kind of simpler way to do that. So let's go ahead here. We'll just start grabbing all of our elements here. So I'm going to go ahead, grab those, grab those, grab that. And now that I've got most of the objects selected, I can hit control plus. You'll see that now I have everything selected. If we go to search and we look for symmetrize, we'll get mesh symmetrize. Now this may not work by default, uh, for you, you may need to change the direction down here. So in this case, since we're working on the positive X. We need to go from the positive X to the negative X. And if we do that, we can see that now we kind of have a little crab shape. So one last step that we can do is we can grab everything uh, by pressing A. If you hold Shift S, we can do selection to grid. What that's going to do is try and snap everything to the grid. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, one thing that can be helpful when doing this type of art is going ahead and grabbing things like this body and hitting Shift S selection to grid. And you'll see how it kind of starts to snap in and clean those things up. It can cause glitches and things when you're doing it on all elements. If I was to grab everything here and do selection to grid, you'd see that it starts to kind of cause some issues. So I only recommend doing this kind of for select segments. But at this point, take some time to kind of clean up 
the kind of pixel proportions and things you want. And then we're going to dive into the texture painting process and some tips on how to paint in this style. So let's go ahead and look at how we can unwrap this thing and begin painting it. So first let's drag a screen over here. We're going to go ahead to our shader editor and we are going to, with our crab selected, create a new material. I'm going to call this crab mob. Great. And we don't need this BSDF. We're just going to go ahead and add a diffuse just to keep things simple. Perfect. And then we need to go ahead and unwrap our mob and create a texture. Now, mob textures are made on like the power of two numbers. So that means things like 16, 32, 64. And so we'll want to create a very low res pixel texture to accommodate that. So we're going to go ahead here and we're going to add a image texture, plug this in. And with that, we'll drag this vector off and type in coordinates. Do the texture coordinate here and we'll plug in that UV. Now we're going to go ahead and create a new image texture. We're going to set this to something tiny. Now the mob texture sizes vary per mob. For this one, I'm going to do 64 pixels by 64 or 32. You can decide which you want. So I'll go ahead, just do 32 by 32, maybe just to make it really small. And for the color, I'm going to go ahead and choose a kind of base color of red. Perfect. Now, what we want to do is ensure that we are able to kind of see that texture on our mob here. So we can switch over to the shade view as well. You can also sometimes um, come up here to solid view, switch to texture. And if you want it to look like Minecraft, you can go ahead and set it to flat. However, I think that the uh, simple shading makes it a bit easier to tell what we're doing. So I'm going to leave that on. Now what we can do is come over here to the UV editor and we need to UV unwrap our crab. You can see that since we did everything with a square, it comes with the default cube unwrapping UVs and we need to go ahead and change that. Now there are a lot of tools, sites, and kind of like advanced tips on getting like absolutely pixel perfect um, UV unwraps for this type of artwork. However, I found that a lot of that stuff is extremely time consuming and you can do this simple method to get it by a little bit quicker. So first, Let's switch here over to texture paint mode and show you what we're going to do. Make sure you have your tool panel open. I'm going to go ahead, shrink this so that we can paint. And under the material there, you want to make sure that you have the crab selected. And here under the image, you want to make sure that you have the correct image selected and that it's 32 by 32 pixels for this to work. And then now what we're going to do is in edit mode, we are going to press U, do smart UV project. Now, since we've done all cubes, it should go ahead and give us a pretty uh, like square setup for all of our faces there, as you can see. I'm gonna go ahead and close that panel so you can see a bit better. So what I'm going to do is grab all of this, and what we can do is come up here to UV and snap selected to pixels. Now, all of these are very close, so if you wanna go ahead, you can add island margins, but I'd recommend maybe just snapping them close like this and just be careful with how you paint. So now that we have all of our faces here in a square thing and we've gone ahead and snapped a pixel, all these have been snapped to a pixel edge. So we should be able to go through here and begin painting onto our character and get a pixelated look. And you'll see there that we start to get a blur. So that can be fixed under the shader editor settings. So if we come back here under our shader editor window and we come in here, you'll see that crab is set to linear. So we can come down here and set this to closest. Now you can actually go ahead under your preferences here and turn off MIP mapping as well if you like. However, I don't like doing this uh, as I like MIP mapping for my other projects. But if you're primarily working in pixel art, you can do that. And you'll see now that we're starting to get a more pixelated look in the viewport. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that texture paint and we're going to play with some of our brush settings here. So you see here that when we're painting it's giving us this kind of like blurry look, which may be what you want, but that's not exactly what I want to do. So we're gonna change a couple things. 
So first of all, what we can do is come down here and it's important to note that playing with the radius here, if you go to set to one pixel, that's going to set your brush size to one pixel in the viewport. And you can see as I'm dragging all around, it's not painting everywhere. So unfortunately, you kind of just have to do a best guess with Blender on what your pixel size is here in the viewport. So just ensure that you kind of have a size that you're happy with. That's not the best way to work, I know, but it's just kind of how it works within Blender. We're gonna come down here to the stroke. And part of the reason we are getting that fall off is because under these stroke settings here with the fall off, we have this nice gradual fade and we want this right here. So click this little right here, preset. And what that's going to do is ensure that we have a, uh, immediate fall off. So now we can just go through and begin painting that way. So perfect. Now the other thing we want to go ahead and do is play with the stroke settings here. So one last setting that we can do to help us on this texture painting is actually over here in the 2D window. So when painting in the style, I recommend kind of switching back and forth between the 2D and 3D. And if you come over here in the 2D window, make sure that you are in image editor mode and that you are in paint mode. Grab the paintbrush here, and the paintbrush size will change per one. As you see, one is based on the viewport, one's based on your image texture over here. So you may need to go ahead and change this back and forth. But one thing you can do over here is under the end panel, you can twirl down the advanced section and turn off anti-aliasing. So you may notice that when you're painting here in the viewport that occasionally it'll start to bleed over on edges. And if you're having issue getting a kind of tight paint, what you can do is go ahead and paint it over here and without that anti-aliasing, that won't be an issue. Great, so one last thing we're going to do before we begin kind of painting our character is we're gonna go back into the shader editor menu. Another trick we can do to kind of help simplify this texturing process is if we come over here to the shader tab, we can go ahead and introduce some noise to our color. So if you're familiar with kind of how Minecraft paints their mobs, it's oftentimes kind of solid blocks of colors with a lot of noise mixed in. So let's go ahead here and look at how we can do that. We're gonna go ahead, add a white noise texture, and we're just gonna shift view so that we can only see this. We're gonna drag this vector off and plug a Veroni texture into here. And we're going to do Veroni texture color. And we're gonna let that color kind of drive the value there. We're gonna go ahead, turn a randomness down here which is going to turn this into more of a blocky texture. And then we're gonna go ahead and play with the scale here until we get something close to what we have. Perfect, so you can see how that's kind of lining up with the edges. This won't be a perfect effect per se, but it will kind of help add a bit to it. Now what we can do is go ahead, move this out here, plug this BSDF here. And what we're gonna do is mix these two colors. So if I go ahead and mix this color, look for a mix. And we'll go ahead and just plug this into a color there. We'll plug a color into A and B. We'll go ahead, plug this into B on the bottom, set the factor to one. We're gonna go ahead, plug the result in here. And right now it's set the color mode. We're gonna go ahead and do the multiply mode. And there you can see we're starting to get kind of some mixes there. You can play with the mixing mode if you want, but we can go ahead and turn this down to something like 0.35. And you can see how we're starting to kind of get that mix of color. So now when we go through and paint our own colors, we're gonna get just a bit of uh, visual variety there as well. And you can go ahead and play with the texture coordinates here as well. So I'm gonna go ahead, plug the UV back into here. And you could play with this one up here if you want as well and try and get those pixels a bit more square. But for now, I'm just gonna leave that and we're gonna move into texture painting. And I'm just gonna fast forward through this process as I've shown you all the tools that you need. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead, do a bit of white here on the eyes and then a black pixel getting those very simple Minecraft eyes. And then for the rest, I'm gonna kind of choose another shade of red and try and add some accents to various portions of the character. And just to get a bit of kind of contrast with color and shape language, I'm gonna go ahead and choose a different color for the bottom of the body of the crab. This is also a great time if you notice that any of your UVs weren't completely snapped to a pixel or that being edge to edge might cause an issue. You can just kind of go over here in the UV editor mode, grab those and just shift those just a tiny bit just to get them a bit more pixel perfect.